create a list. In this presentation, I will create a contact list and a discussion board list. Along the way, talking about some of the best practices, also the properties associated with a list. Let's go ahead first of all and of course start off at your home site and we're going to create an instance of a contact list. By doing so we go to settings and add an app. Once the apps page is loaded we see all of the apps that we may add to our site. Now this is going to differ depending on what apps are installed and what features are active. So you may or may not see these particular items in your own personal space. But let's take a look. We have various document library, form, other library such items. We also have our list objects. In this case, I am interested in contacts. Now it's time to add a proper unique name for this particular list. It's important that you know the very first name that you provide a list will forever become its address bar URL name, meaning that it may not be changed after the fact in that address bar. Also, if that original name happens to have a space in it, it will turn into a percent %20 character in the URL. This can make the URL difficult to read, links can become convoluted, and issues may arise. It is a better idea, a best practice so to speak, to go ahead and not use spaces. I'm going to go ahead and I will call this Pentoso Contacts, but I'm not using a space. Another option would have, as you've seen, I started to put almost a, an underscore. That would have also been acceptable, but I prefer myself the uppercase, lowercase with no spaces. And I'll go ahead and create. Now if we take a look, we now have over in our quick launch area a Contoso contact list. I'm going to go ahead and click upon that. Now we come to our contact list. To make our permanent connection inside of that quick launch menu, also to properly render out a better title, we will go to the list settings. These are found on the list toolbar. In the far right, list settings. Once the list settings have presented themselves, we have many, many choices. And if you can only remember a few things out of all the wonderful things we teach you, one of those I would want you to take away would be the fact that the list settings is the main place to go to alter and or affect how the list and or library behaves. So it's a good place to go if you're wanting to know how to change Oh, quite frankly, just about anything related to that list or library. In this case, we are interested in the list name, description, and navigation. I see that the name is, of course, the no space, lowercase, uppercase. I now make them both uppercase and then, of course, put in our proper space. We have an optional description. Use for the main contacts. You know, so, so give others a reason why this list exists and how it may help them. And then yes, please do display this in the quick launch area. And save. Give it a moment or two to process. And before we know it, we see the effects right away. I see that the Contoso space contacts, both with capital C and then of course we see the title right up here. And I'll use that title as it's of course our breadcrumb navigation and go back to the main Contoso contact list to show you that the address bar still retains the lowercase no space name because that's the first name that we had provided for that list. So that's a good lesson for you guys to learn to think about 
very first off giving it a name that is specific enough yet not too specific. Example, if uh, somebody named John runs the sales department, we would not want to call it John's SATE. We should call it sales department and then put John as the full control owner of it. Therefore, the full control owner can always be changed, but the thing that's consistent is that it's the sales department. And then, of course, not using spaces initially, coming back into those settings, and then adding the space afterwards. Very good best practice to get used to. Now let's initiate a new contact. Right here I have the two options. I have a new item link. I also have items and new item. Either way would be equally fine. Once the form presents itself, it's now time for us to fill out the information. Now it's time to put in the name information. We're going to go ahead and put in a sample record. Uh, Marge Simpson. Use the tab key, and this is where we can put in an address of some sort if we choose to. We also have the email address we can fill out if we if we wish to. All right, we have whatever company it may be. So you may fill out as much or as little as you'd like, and then when you are done, you simply click Save. Once the item has been saved, it transitions back to the main list, and I see that our contact has been placed. We have the last name, the first name, the company, and the email address. Um, but quite frankly, that's it. We could have added more, but that's all we chose to add about the contact at this point in time. Let's go ahead and create yet another type of list by going to Settings, Add an App. Once the app page loads, simply scroll down and locate the sort of item that we're wanting to create. In this scenario, we want a discussion board. And of course, we need to give it a name. And if we choose for this to ultimately be part of our big picture uh, left-hand navigation, and if we want to go in and change the title, of course, we have the same opportunity to do so by first going to it and then locating the list settings. This, again, should be your list tab. List settings on the far right clicking upon the list name, description, and navigation. And then clicking Save when we're all done. And we don't always have to have a description. Now, time to add a new discussion thread, a new discussion item. I'll go ahead and click the link. Uh, we may put in whatever we'd like for the subject line. And then, of course, the message body. We have all sorts of nice things we may insert. I can put in a heading, a paragraph. Maybe first I'll put a heading in. And then after that, we'll have a paragraph. And possibly not just a paragraph, but a bulleted number uh, or bulleted or numbered list. And we'll put one more. Now, we have an option to have a little checkbox here, something about to question. When this is checked, it is used as a filter for an unanswered question view. And then whatever view they happen to choose, this question, if it is a question and it has not yet been responded to, then it obviously shows up as an unanswered question. I'm going to go ahead and save. And now we see our discussion, SharePoint 2013 features. And if we click upon it to see it in its full detail, 
I see that my formatting has been applied with the major heading and the three bulleted items in the list. I have an option if I am the owner to go back and edit the original. If I were, let's say, logged in just as another user, I would not see the edit, but I would see a reply and I can say, sounds great, whatever the case may be, and then choose reply. And it shows the reply. So it's a great way to communicate, post a question, and then get your coworkers response to those when they have time to, of course, respond. These types of lists are very helpful for committees, any groups, any pre-meeting sites, things like that, where we would like to pose some questions, gather the thoughts of others prior to meeting face-to-face -face so that we have a sense of how things are going to turn out. Up next, list columns.